This is an introduction to the photoelectric effect lab for the intermediate lab class. I'll describe the objectives of the lab and, the, and briefly go over the physics that you're going to want to know to complete the lab and understand it. The student learning outcomes for this lab are to understand the principle of the quantization of light, which means the light travels as photons, which are quanta of energy, to become familiar with an important 20th century experiment, and also the lab student learning outcome is to design an effective measurement strategy using sensitive equipment. The lab objectives are, so this is the things that you will find during the lab, or that you will, th these are like your results. One, find the stopping potential for different frequencies or colors of light. Two, when you find a value of Planck's constant, determine whether your value found through your measurements is consistent with the accepted value. Three, find the work function of the metal in this apparatus. So the basic principle has to do with photons and energy. And it is that light is made up of photons, which are tiny, massless packets of energy. The energy of an individual photon is given by HF. In other words, it's the frequency F multiplied by Planck's constant H. So each photon has an energy HF. The value of Planck's constant, known to us now, is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And one thing you're going to want to be able to do in this lab is convert between joules and EVs. So we're going to also find the value of Planck's constant in EV seconds now. If we want to convert to units of EV, it's going to look like this. We know that one EV is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So Planck's constant given in joule seconds times the conversion factor of 1 EV to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules gives us 4.136 times 10 to the minus 15 EV seconds. So that's the value of Planck's constant in EV seconds. You'll find it fairly convenient to get your answer in EV seconds actually. All right, so what is the photoelectric effect? It's just like the name sounds. When light, photo, shines on a metal, it's observed that electrons, electric, are released. This picture comes from a FET, which you're welcome to play with. The link to a downloadable um, app is here. And the FET shows that we've got light of different colors shining on a metal and little electrons are released and just sort of travel across to the other side, to the collector. In the photoelectric effect, each photon carries an amount of energy that we described, E equals HF. And in order to find the photon energy, what we're going to do instead is record the energy that electrons have when they leave the metal. Something else that we want to think about is how different colors have different energy. A color or a wavelength is related to the frequency by f equals c over lambda or lambda equals c over f, etc. So you can convert between frequency and wavelength using that expression. All right, so let's think about going from photons to electrons. We want to know how much energy is transferred to electrons in the metal um, as they leave the metal. So we start with photons with energy HF and the electrons which are pictured here as shown inside the metal are held in with an energy that we, we call the work function. The work function is a potential at, or is an energy, sorry, represented as phi. And so we say okay the metal has a work function phi, that's how much energy it takes to release an electron. So the maximum energy an electron can have when it leaves the metal will be equal to the energy of the photons minus the work function. So here we have two electrons that are released by two photons coming into the 
to the metal. Two photons strike the metal. The electrons are released with a maximum energy, Hf minus phi. All right, so let's describe what's happening in the experiment. This will be followed by a, a live video outlining the actual equipment that you have in the experiment. So this is a schematic. What we're going to do is we're going to shine light from an LED on a metal ring, which we call the emitter. Electrons are going to be released from that ring. We know with a maximum energy, K max equals HF minus phi. Some will have less energy, but the maximum energy they can possibly have is, K, is HF minus phi. So there's our emitter. Uh, and now we're going to put a potential difference that we'll call VAC between the emitter and the collector. Depending on the, the which side is more is at a higher potential, the electrons will either be accelerated towards the collector or slowed as they approach the collector. So the collector's there, we apply a, a potential difference VAC across the emitter and collector. Now we're going to measure the current flowing through the circuit that contains the emitter and the collector. So this A represents an ammeter. We have a very sensitive ammeter for this experiment. What you will do is change the accelerating voltage, VACC, and see what happens to the change to the current. At some particular voltage, you're going to find that the current goes to zero. In other words, you have provided enough energy to stop the electrons. So we call this potential VACC equals V stop. Therefore, we've discovered that the maximum energy of the electrons must be K max equals E, charge of the electron times V stop. So what you should do in this experiment is find the stopping voltage for as many different wavelengths or frequencies as you can. You have about five or six to work with. And then mathematically combine the two expressions you have for K max and figure out a way to plot your stopping voltages to determine Planck's constant. So you're going to want to make a graph, make a plot, where Planck's constant is the slope of that plot. This video shows the equipment. This is a video showing the equipment for the photoelectric effect. I'm bending down because I'd like to be as close as possible to the equipment and, the, and it's at this height. We'll start with everything turned off and then show how to turn it on and what each part is. All right, so the photoelectric effect works by shining light on a metal that can emit electrons and then applying a potential such that those electrons are either accelerated or slowed as they move towards a collector. So we need to shine some light. We have on this little card, we have some different LEDs and we will turn them on, you'll be able to see when you're actually doing the experiment. So right here, there are LEDs. We turn on the light with this power supply. Switch it on. And as you turn it up, you'll see that light will come on. You can probably see a little red light. And when it looks you know, fairly bright, that's enough. Okay. So this light shines on something we can't see. Inside this box is an emitter, which is a coil. And that coil will emit electrons. So we just position this as close as we can. You can see the light is illuminating the opening here. All right, got our light on. Next thing to turn on is the, is the uh, potential. And we do that with a set of batteries. So we've got two batteries right here. We're going to plug in the uh, not plugged in battery lead to the three volts thing here. So we've got two banana plug leads plug into three volts. And now we have three volts connected, but we can control the voltage going to the uh, going to the potential difference, 
to the emitter or the collector with this knob here. It says coarse volts or fine volts. So we can turn up the voltage or turn it down and we will use that to control the, the applied potential difference for this experiment. Okay, so we need to measure two things. We want to measure the amount of current that we're creating and we want to measure the voltage that's causing that current to change. Uh, we also know the wavelength of the light because it's written on this card for different LEDs and so you'll try this with, with a set of different LEDs. We measure the current with this device. This is a very sensitive, it's a Keithley electrometer and it's connected to the galvanometer connection over here on our, on our photoelectric setup. We will turn this on, turn the meter on to measuring negative. What we can change here is the scale. We can change the sensitivity of this uh, meter. This is very sensitive to anything. It's, it's measuring, right now it's measuring 10 to the minus 8 amperes. That's a tiny little amount of current. So when, we, when the voltage changes across the, uh, across the plates, we'll see different amounts of current. All right. The last thing we're going to turn on, the last thing we're going to turn on is the voltmeter. This is a voltmeter that we will use to measure the voltage that we're applying to the potential to the um, collector and the emitter. These leads are going to, are reading the voltmeter output on that box. So I'm going to turn the voltmeter on to, let's say, the 20 volt scale. All right. Now what will happen is, you won't have to bend down to do this, when I change the voltage applied, I'll notice that the current changes on this meter. All right. So you are ready to go with this experiment. You can adjust the voltage with the coarse or the fine adjust and measure it with this meter. Adjust the voltage here, measure it here. And as you do that, you can record the current that you read off of this meter. You may find yourself wanting to change the powers of 10 scale. Um, you can always start less sensitive, like 10 to the minus 7 or 10 to the minus 8, and work your way down if you need to. And that's all of the equipment that you need to turn on. What you'll change is the color of the light by changing which of these LEDs is plugged in. All right, so when we're done, we'll turn down the knobs, turn down the voltage. We can turn off the current meter, turn off the light source, and turn off the multimeter. And once we've disconnected the battery, we're done, and we can leave everything as we found it. So that's it for the photoelectric effect introduction. So your pre-lab questions are on the lab sheet as well as right here. Write these in your notebook and answer the questions also in your notebook. Assume that you measure a stopping potential of V-stop equals 0 0.30 volts. What would the energy be of the electrons in units of electron volts and units of joules? Two, if we want to accelerate electrons from the emitter to the collector, should the emitter or the collector be at a higher potential? And three, sketch a possible graph of current versus voltage for any particular wavelength, that doesn't matter, just a possible graph of current versus voltage. And now you're ready to go and do the photoelectric effect experiment.